Who are the most influential and successful people in Peel Region? Whether it's politics, sports, business, entertainment, or public service, find out about the leaders in your community right now on Peel Achievers. Your hosts, Vivek Kohli and Jenna Lee Krillman. Welcome to Peel Achievers, the show that brings you the great personalities and achievers from our own Peel community. I am Vivek Kohli. And I am Jenna Lee Krillman. And today we have the honor of having on our show a very senior politician who has been a parliamentarian for the last 20 years. And uh, he has inspired and motivated so many immigrants into this country to be a part of the Canadian politics. And the name of our guest today is Mr. Gurbak Singh Mali. Gurbak Singh Mali is a Canadian politician currently living in the Peel region. He was educated at Punjab University, where he earned a Bachelor of Arts degree in Political Science, English, and History. He then moved to Canada in 1974. Gurbakh started his new life in Canada as a factory worker and later became a real estate agent. He is founder and director of the Canadian Sikh Cultural and Sports Centre and was a volunteer member of the Peel Police Ethnic Race L Relations Committee. Gurbaks began his career as a politician and became the first politician wearing a turban to be elected anywhere in the Western world. As a Liberal Party supporter and member, he was first elected as the Member of Parliament for Bramley Gore Malton in 1993 and served as its representative in the House of Commons for 18 consecutive years. He is a Sikh who has introduced numerous ceremonies of the Sikh religion to Parliament Hill, including the yearly Akhand Pat ceremony and Parliament Hill's first ever Diwali celebration. In 2002, Gurbux was the recipient of the Queen's Golden Jubilee Medal for his commitment and contributions to Canadian society. In 2002, he was also recognized as an ambassador of peace by the Interreligious and International Federation of World Peace. In 2003, he earned the privilege of being appointed for life to the Queen's Privy Council for Canada by then Prime Minister Paul Martin. He has served as a Parliament Secretary to various ministries in Canada such as Industry, Human Resources and Skills Development and Ministry of National Revenue. Gurbux was the member of various inter-parliamentary associations representing Canada with countries such as the United Kingdom, Africa and Japan. He has also been a member of various friendship groups such as Canada Germany, Canada Israel and Canada Italy and is the founder of the Canada South Asian Friendship Group.
Welcome back to Peel Achievers. Today, we have former member of parliament and liberal politician, Gurbak Singh Mali with us. Gurbak, thank you very much for joining us today. Welcome on the show, sir. Thank you. My pleasure. No, it's our pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, like many Canadians and residents of Peel, you immigrated from another country. Yes. That's correct. Uh, please tell us why you chose Canada as your new home. Uh, when I was in the university, I thought it's a good opportunity in Canada as compared to India. So that's why I chose to come to Canada. Wow. And was Canada everything that you expected it to be when you arrived here? No, in the beginning that was very hard, you know. Especially when I came in here, economically I was not very sound. Mm -hmm. You know, I had to pay the rent for the apartment buy the car, and also look after other services. So when I was going door to door for the job at that time, it was very hard to find a job. Right. But my first experience was that wherever I go, the people was asking, the employer was asking, you have any Canadian experience? <laughs> you have any Canadian experience? That was frustrating, you know. Somebody knew how come he has a Canadian experience. Mm -hmm. That was, so I was very, uh, I was not feeling good at that time. Yeah. Did you migrate to Canada alone? No, actually my wife was here. She came to Canada in 1972. She went back to India and I go, we got married. And then I, she sponsored me in 1975. Oh. Wow. So I came <coughs> here in 1975. Well, that's nice that you had the support of your wife so that yeah. you could face the challenges together. Yes. yes. Now, like all immigrants, there are many challenges to face when you're in your new environment, you know, whether it be language or trying to get a yeah, new definitely. job. What would you say was your biggest and greatest challenge that you had to overcome as a newcomer to Canada? Uh, yes, there was so many challenges. First of all, you know, to find the job, that was a big challenge. And to, uh, after that, to, I was uh, also thinking to have further studies. So I joined the part-time courses at uh, Humber College. So I have my, uh, some good job for that after the courses. Mm -hmm. And from what I know about you, Gerbax, you worked very hard to get to where you are today. Yes. And you, you know, involved yourself in different career fields as well. Is that right? Yes. You were working in a factory and then a real estate agent. Yes. And then you became involved in the community, which is that what inspired you to become a politician? Actually, when I was in India, uh, I was only five, six year old. At that time, my wife, my, sorry, my mother, she was a single mother, and people all the time consult her in the village about the services or during the election time, you know, they need her help. Oh. So at that time, I was going with my mother when she, she was helping the people during the election time or for other services. So that is in my blood. <laughs> so after that, I thought, uh, I was not thinking about here, I was thinking about in India and Punjab, if I have a chance to join the politics, I will do that. So that was my dream, and that was also my mother's dream. And so uh, my another uh, aim was to help the people. Most of the politicians in India, once they got elected, they don't care about the people. They it's hard answer. to find them. Yeah. For four or five years, hard to find them. That was the situation at that time. I don't know, might have improved a little bit, no, not much. Maybe a little bit improved now, right. but hard to find the people. But my mother dream was that if I, if I join the politics and I got elected, I will be accessible, approachable, and I will listen to the people and try to solve their problem. So that's what I did over here. And did your mother get to see you no. reach your success in politics? She passed away in 1972. Oh my God, so sorry about that. Well, I'm sure she'd be very proud oh of yeah, you. Oh yeah, she definitely. I'm sure yeah. you went a lot further than you yeah. or her could ever have imagined. Yeah. So, uh, Mr. Mali, our country's newcomers are creating diversities yeah. Yeah. and they are uh, evolving our culture and even laws. So what happened when you were first selected as a member of Canadian Parliament? First of all, that was very hard, you know. Before me, nobody can sit in the House of Commons 
uh, to cover their head with cover their head with cap or hat and uh, nobody can wear the headgear mm -hmm. at that time wow. so i talked to the my party leader at that time and then we were meeting with other party leaders like a forum at that time there was a forum party and conservative party and block of ekwa so my leader spoke to the other people and we, we explained to them this is a religious symbol mm -hmm. so i i am wearing all that time and also the people elect me so That's they great. agree so i broke the barrier i broke <laughs> the tradition i i was very proud that i was uh, serving the P canadian uh, and the, i was serving in the canadian parliament with the turban i was the first person to serve as a member of parliament in the north america with the turban with wow. the headgear yeah, yeah because headgears were not allowed yeah. before yeah. him so he had the uh, one who changed this law and i'm sure that that one moment and change was very symbolic yes. of the evolving times in canada with the diversity and new immigrants yeah. in the country that was a time was a very hard time for the especially for the new immigrants and uh, also uh, in brimpton and vancouver you know the, in the sikh communities uh, so many fighting at that time uh, and the temples and the people was not happy the the community at large was not happy because every day of fighting in the temple here there mm -hmm. so when i got my nomination in 1992 Mm -hmm. and after that in the general election in 1993 october 1993 i have a chance to go door to door to meet the people mm -hmm. and i still remember that when i was canvassing door to door on folkstone and uh, folkstone drive in bremley mm -hmm. yeah. and i knocked the first door the woman told me oh you are not going to represent us you are going to talk about uh, punjab you are going to talk about uh, khalistan this and so many things she raised the question mm -hmm. and she, she sh shut the door and then i was i was little bit upset but uh, no that was my job to convince the people yeah and that so, was your first door yeah. that you went knocking <laughs> to wow. and then i knocked the second door nobody was on third door i knocked the woman the third woman said, oh you are going to talk about uh, you know temples you are going to talk about this you are going to talk about ambassador you know so i said no if you give me the chance i can talk mm -hmm. to you can i come in uh, first she was hesitating and then she told me okay come in and we talk about 20 minutes she asked me so many question and finally she was happy she said you know i am glad you know hey, uh, you are talking about something different what i was thinking about right. and i told her i said look how many times the member uh, candidate from the party came to your house you are living here from the last uh, mm -hmm. 25 year she said nobody came to my house before that you are the first one mm -hmm. i say and you are going to if you elect me you are going to elect me first one time and if you don't do anything good don't elect me again not vote for me again <laughs> she was angry with that that's amazing and finally she said yes and i asked can i put the lawn sign in front of your house she said she agree yes wow. you can put one and after 3 4 days the another